Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today, I'd like to share with you a mining application for Macs. That's right, I've been playing around with my M1 Max MacBook Pro, hanging around with mining. I'm actually porting it at the moment to Metal, so stay tuned for that. But the point is, I wanted to be able to mine in the background on my Mac, and I found that when you mine on the Mac, it makes the Mac completely unusable. So I made this little app at the moment. It's got kind of like a power mode level situation. So right now I've got OBS running on my computer. I've got Final Cut Pro running here. And in total, with my dual screen setup and all that kind of stuff, we're using four watts from the GPU. GPU can go up to around 12 watts, and this guy's only using four watts. And we're actually mining about 1.34 mega hashes a second. And so I've got this feature called power mode. And normally if I go to high power mode, you can see that Final Cut Pro is starting to become a chug city and your computer becomes a bit, you know, unusable. But when you start mining at lower power modes, obviously I'm doing a lot here. For example, I'm gonna to go to low. Computer becomes more responsive and you can play around a bit. It's still actually very smooth if you're doing OBS and all that stuff under low power mode. But I use very low power mode, just have it a bit mining in the background now. Something about mining, even though people like Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, has shares in uh, cryptocurrencies, he's got a bit of Bitcoin, all that kind of stuff, has his stock portfolio. Mining is not officially allowed on Macs, on the Mac App Store. So Apple don't like you using your CPU to mine. And to be honest with you, it is a bad idea to mine on your Mac, especially if you use a traditional mining application. They just hog as much of the GPU as possible, 100% mode, and completely can, you know, destroy your computer, right? if you're constantly just hitting it up, destroying your system. So maybe don't use this application, but if you're just interested in playing around a bit, I'll show you how to use it. And of course, you know, use it on the lower power modes. I use it between low and very low myself, just every now and then, just have a little play. It's more like a research project for me. I wanna see if I can get it ported to metal. I'm really excited about that, but that'll be stage two of the situation. For now, I'll just get it up and running. So when you go on the website, you just click download app and make sure you get it from the official website because I don't know, hackers, they hack stuff. And uh, once you download the app, Chrome, they might give you a little notification saying this is a dangerous application to use. You just click on the arrow button and click um, save anyway. And then you can download zip. And then when you unzip it, Mac OS, because the app hasn't been downloaded from the app store, that will suggest that they can't make sure that it's a decent application. So they don't allow you to run it unless you right click and click open. So when you right click and click open, you can run it. And when you launch it, it just appears on the menu screen on the top right here. And it's pretty easy to use. You can set your mining wallet and server. And I've got an example of it running here and actually an explanation about wallets and servers and all that kind of stuff here. I'll explain in a second how to fill it in. And you've got a power mode level here. Choose very low, low, medium, high. Very low uses around one watt. Low uses around two watts, medium uses around six watts, and high uses around 10 watts. Now, like I said before, you can use more watts on your GPU. However, I've put in artificial limits, so you can't go 100% of your GPU. I just gave it a bit of breathing space because I didn't like the idea of using 100% of your GPU on Macs. I don't like your computer becoming unresponsive. So I put in some breathing space so you can always close down the application and the other. So it's not like the mine, other mining applications. We're gonna get performance when we port it over to Metal. For now, we're just getting the power efficiencies. And if you notice, when it's running on very low, it uses less than one watt of energy, but it produces more than one mega hash per second. So that's pretty good. I'll show you the demonstration of it will run in a second. But I'm gonna set it, for example, here to low. Inside preferences, you can have it automatically start mining as soon as you start the application up and you can have it start at login as well. So as soon as your computer starts up, it just starts mining in the background. Pretty cool. It certainly makes computer. No, don't do that. Not that, that, that person. Now there is a dev fee, but I've made it skippable. So when you click on the start mining, it says uh, it's mining for the dev 1%. I'm going to make 50 cents out of this. <laughs> Probably make nothing out of this, but you can just click skip and it skips the dev segment. I might change it in the future that it only does it after, for example, two hours, because it does a dev situation for two minutes. Every two hours, I might just make it after two hours. But for now, it is what it is. I just wanted to get something out there. Now let's show you the power levels of it being run. So for example, here you see Final Cut Pro still running in the background. And I'm using, like, uh, it went up to eight watts right now. But of course it depends on, now it's going down six and a half, but I'll pause this and try giving you a baseline of the mining right here, right now. So I'm very low. Of course, OBS is running as well. So these aren't the actual answers that I showed you earlier, but I'll show you it live here. So under very low, we are using two watts of energy and we're mining 1.3 mega hashes. 
And if we stop mining completely, the GPU power drops to around one watt. So the delta there is one watt. So it's like I said, but of course this is tested on the M1 Max and uh, your, your Mac. Let me know if it runs on your Mac, that'll be pretty interesting. Now, how to mine for your accounts here. So if you're new to this whole mining situation, you need a wallet and a server. So I've actually got an explanation on how to get one of those on the website here and how to download and run it. But a mining server is just a place for you to be given jobs. You kind of people mine in pools, a collection of computers to get solutions. So you need to find a mining pool. I've suggested here Unminable. If you go to Unminable's website here, you choose what kind of coin you want to mine. And just say we want Dogecoin, for example, here. This is the server. So you copy that and you put that in the address here, just like that. And it uses stratum colon forward slash forward slash. That's kind of like the mining protocol address, kind of like HTTP, it's for websites. Stratum is for mining pools. So you leave that there. And next you need to put in your address. So the address is shown right here. So it says dodgy colon your address dot worker name. So you paste that in there and you got to type in your address for your wallet and the name for your miner. So for example, we're going to call it Mac. And that's the address there. Now, if you don't have a wallet, that's the next step of the guide. So it tells you all about mining wallets, safety and all that stuff. Of course, the safest place to keep your wallet is a hardware wallet. Basically, the way mining wallets work is you get a private key and a public key. The private key can generate the public key and it can sign transactions. So a hardware wallet just stores that private key on an offline device and your public key is on your online device. So when you want to make a transaction, you got to ask your hardware wallet, what is the private key? And it gives you this, or it signs it for you. You give it the camera, all that kind of stuff. That is a bit complicated. So there's alternatives to that. There's uh, mining um, exchanges, for example, Kraken. That's a good one to use. They don't provide insurance for your wallet, but they haven't been hacked in a while. They're considered one of the, the safest out there. But again, you know, they don't provide insurance. So if you have a lot of money, be careful. The advantages of using something like Kraken is, is when you do get the coins in your wallet, you can convert it to real cash from using an exchange. Next step down from that or up, depending on your view, is to run a mining wallet application. There's like Atomic Wallet, you can use that. That one is just runs on your Mac and it gives you an address. And whenever you get the process of the payment, it goes into your address. That is good. You get to run it on your Mac. You need to be secure enough for your Mac. The problem with that is, is that if you do want to exchange the coins for money, you need to transfer your coins to an exchange which has cryptocurrency to real currency. And the transfer fees of that at the moment is like $50 because Ethereum is very, very expensive. So you can get your money in a wallet, but to get it out of a wallet, it costs you money. So you might as well just get the money straight to a place where you can transfer it into real money. That's one option there. Or you can put it in a hardware wallet and all that kind of stuff. The worst one to use, I got hacked by it recently. I used a Chrome extension called MetaMask. They are rife with hacking. It could actually have been the, the coin I was mining. I checked that their website was uh, connected. So, and Uniswap was connected. So some dodginess happened there, but basically don't use a Chrome extension. Maybe we'll do a follow up video on that, but if you can, there's Atomic Wallet, there's Kraken, there's loads of exchanges out there investigating that and there's hardware wallets, but you're just doing this for fun. So maybe just see if it works first and all that kind of stuff. So one other thing about the servers and wallets is look into the coins because they all have different thresholds for payment. For example, if we did want to mine Shibu, it says right there that payouts for Ethereum chain, which is what we're using. Maybe you can use the other ones, but the wallets I use don't support that. Anyway, payments for the Ethereum chain is one and a half million SHIB. So it's gonna take you a long, long while to actually get paid. Your money is just gonna, your coin, your coin is just gonna be in our mineable until you reach that level, and then it will be transferred to your account if you choose to be. Whereas if you mine maybe a cheaper coin, for example, a popular one is Wink, that one, you can get payment every 1,900 wins. So maybe that's a more reasonable coin to mine on the systems, but stay tuned for the mental optimized version of this situation. I got hopes, but I also don't have that much hopes for, for metal. I have been putting some algorithms, the performance improvement was in a 10% ratio. So I'm not that confident, but I'll see if I can unlock something special anyway. And uh, it might be useful when it comes out for the Mac Pro. But that is the future. And today, just check it out if you're interested. Called it the original title, Mac Miner. And uh, I might actually make it work for the AMD Macs just next before I release the Metal One because I still have my AMD Mac. 
and that one might go soon. So maybe I'll just get it working for that. In the meantime, it's just gonna be fun to see side by side which one performs better, Apple Silicon versus uh, AMD. But let me know what kind of features you'd want in this application. If you think this is a good idea, or you, you probably don't wanna be mining on Macs, isn't it? Imagine if I make it good, people are gonna be buying Macs left, right and center. Oh no, oh no, the price is gonna go up. Okay, hopefully I won't be able to do that. One more thing about this application is that because I'm a private kind of guy, I've used no analytic tracking software in this application. You can't even check for updates at the moment. So the idea is I don't wanna be tracked. So I expect you guys don't be tracked. There is however, Google Analytics on the website. So maybe disable your cookies if you're worried about that kind of situation, but the app itself, it doesn't make any foreign server calls other than that to the mining pool. And if you don't trust me, what you can do is use an application called Lulu. Lulu is an open source firewall. You can download that. You can even compile it yourself and run it yourself. That's pretty cool. You can get that. And that tells you all of the network communications that happen. So I'm gonna run the mining pool right now. I'll click start mining and I've got a notification here. It's connecting to 192.168.1.1, which is the local network. It needs to do that because it needs to get to the router to get to the internet. And I'm just gonna allow that remote endpoint. I'll click allow there. And then the next call is going to 128.199.166.244. And that is actually our mineable server. That's where their mining pool is. So I'll just allow that. And it's got another one here. It's got 159.65.47. So let's put that in, see who that is. This one is again in DigitalOcean and this one's in Singapore. So I think what happened there is I went to Unminable. They told me that my closest mining pool was in Singapore. So that's what we're gonna mine on from now. So I'll approve that one. And now it says unable to connect because I took too long, but now it's connecting and there's no more calls. So it's just making those two calls. Those addresses may change because it's up to unminable.com. That is just a website address, but the actual IP addresses it uses for its servers is gonna vary. So I think what happened there is we went to unminable.com. That was the initial um, IP address. And then it told me that my closest mining pool was in Singapore. And that's the one I'm currently mining from. You'll get different addresses, double check the IP addresses, but none of the IP addresses will match the website that this is on. Of course, don't trust me, you know, do, do your research. But like I said, I don't have any calls to Google and all that kind of stuff, analytics tra tracking software in the app itself. And I also don't ask for administra, administer privileges. I did want to get the power modes, how much watts was being used, but I'd need to ask for your admin passwords and I just don't want, I don't want that. So that's why I don't have that feature in. If it is a required feature, I'll make it optional at least so you know what's going on. But yeah, so yeah, that's the, how the privacy situation works. There's no external website calls other than that to the mining pools. All right, hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show. I'm rich. Look at that. So it's very responsive under very low, and it's also responsive under low. Medium is when it starts to slow down, but high, I, may, I might even just disable high, but I'll put it in there just to, for researchers to have a little play.